good to have good to have you everybody uh, my name is ali and i am the convener of the course the module for iran history culture and politics a part of, as part of our program so we will start um, discussing this together and uh, <clears throat> good afternoon ali reza as well all right, so let me see. Okay, okay, everyone. Let me share with you the slides that I have, and then uh, we can go through this together. Okay, everybody, I believe, I believe you can see it. Can you see the slides? Yep, excellent. Thank you. So let's go through this together. So uh, <clears throat> today I will be discussing with you um, and I introduced two very, very interesting, unique uh, programs that we have. And that is um, Near and Middle Eastern Studies and Iranian Studies. <clears throat> First of all, I want to welcome you to our department and our school, School of Langu uh, Cultures, Languages and Linguistics, or School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, I, sh I should say. Uh, we are a uh, school uh, within SAWAS that we actually um, provide a unique and specific degrees and courses for you. <clears throat> so Near and Middle Eastern Studies and Iranian Studies. So the theme of discussion today is what is Middle East? What is Iran? Um, Middle East and Iran's role in it together. So the first thing that we need to pay attention to is that why is it distinctive? Why is it distinctive about, uh, why is distinctive about the study of Near and Middle Eastern studies and Iranian studies at this specific school? What is special about this when I say that? So, first of all, the reason is we are looking into the Middle East and Iran in it <clears throat> from global perspective. And we are looking into this region, to the Middle East and Iran through non-Western lenses, Middle Eastern and Global South. What do I mean? I mean that, Unlike, or maybe other institutions do that, but we are looking from different angles. We are looking at the Middle East and we are looking into Middle East from a global perspective, from how the world sees the Middle East. <clears throat> and then we look into Middle East and Iran through non-Western lenses specifically. And then we look into how actually the region is um, considered and discussed and evaluated by the Middle Eastern and Global South. And that makes our approach quite special because we are not looking into it from only global perspective, but we are actually going in the Middle East we, and, and, and see how the region is actually um, discussed within the Middle Eastern and within the global south. When I say global south, like Far East Asia, Asia, Latin America, Africa, and, and so on. <clears throat> For these two unique programs that I mentioned to you, and I explained to you why is unique and why I say is unique, and how, uh, how we are actually going to do so, is we are providing a broader spectrum of studying Middle East and Iran in the region. We have regional expertise, but I tell you now that what is the difference between our school and for these programs with many other institutions? First of all, we are looking and we bring you into this debate and we make you get, in, get involved first with the international relations of the Middle East. We look into international relations of the Middle East 
in a way to tell you, and you will be the one to lead as well, about the regional perception of the globe. This is very important. We are not just only talking about international relations of Iran, international relations of Turkey or Iraq or Syria. We are looking into how the region perceives the world in order to understand the, uh, the political and foreign policy behavior, we need to understand how actually in the Middle East, uh, the Middle East and foreign policy makers perceive the world. And this is, this is what we are actually going to, 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 to discuss. We also, we are not limited to international relations of the Middle East. We are actually make you get involved with the discussions and debates and academic research on the internal and regional politics. When I say internal politics, it means uh, the legislations, means the internal politics, the elections, the political parties, uh, the, the revolutions, the grassroots movements, and also <clears throat> regional politics. We look into relations between the Middle Eastern states, not only between the world and the Middle East, but also within Middle East and Middle East. What we do also here that makes our programs unique is that we study the contemporary history and more importantly, cultural elements of the Middle East. And one part of it is linguistic studies and unique language courses. Literally, unlike any other programs, these two programs um, not only give you a very broad spectrum in terms of international politics and internal politics and sociological elements, but actually makes you engaged with this topic while you are actually trained uh, in terms of languages. The language of the region literally is all, all modules are complementing each other. What is the backbone of these two programs, which I will explain, I'll give you an example of one of the modules that we do, how actually we go into it, is we have a deep multi-dimensional, um, let's say, engagement with the political realities, socio-economy, and cultural specification, linguistic and social elements of the Middle East. And for example, in this case, Iran, literally is about foreign policy of the Middle East and Iran, international politics of the Middle East and Iran, internal, regional politics, economy of the countries, and also cultural elements, which is very important to have this with intensive language courses that we are actually providing. And that makes you to be, and the goal of our programs, these two programs um, in our um, um, School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics is to make you to be experts by the time you are graduated from these programs. <clears throat> we are looking into mainstream approach as well as critical approach. We are not only um, uh, we are making sure that you're updated with the, with, the, with, with the mainstream approach, but at the same time, critical approach uh, uh, to, to discuss that. One thing else that actually makes us quite um, fit for purpose, and I would say you, even very um, welcoming and very, um, let's say, uh, interesting, is the diverse background of our academics and our students. Uh, I will introduce a few of the colleagues here, but in our classes, we have students from all around the world who are getting uh, engaged with these two topics because it's not, as I said, at the end of the day, it's not about politics. Here, we offer you cultural studies, linguistic studies, sociological studies, and all in one, package. <clears throat> so even if you look at the name of the, our department, Near and Middle East Section School of Languages and Cultures and Linguistics, that makes it a distinct and inspirational department. I say this to you because I did work in other universities and other departments as well, but this department 
is absolutely inspirational because is a kind it provides a umbre umbrella of all these topics and you have absolute freedom to choose which elements <clears throat> here i would like to also briefly uh, discuss about these two programs and then i give you an example of it <clears throat> one is ma middle eastern studies and then we talk about ma iranian studies uh, you can combine them with intensive language courses <clears throat> um, the, the, the structure is very simple and you can have it in our website. Um, you can take 180 uh, credits and the students can take 60 credits from the dissertation, which is a part of it, and 120 credits from taught modules. We have core modules and then optional modules. So you have a dissertation, which is 60, and then you have a core module, <clears throat> And then you have optional modules. The core modules, for instance, um, for this program is remapping area studies in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, and also Middle East in 10 weeks. You can, you can see the name of the program is a remapping area studies, which is actually looking into not only political elements, but remapping all the elements that I told you, cultural, sociological, economical, artistic, politics, international relations, and all in one package. The, the, the wealth of these programs is the optional modules that we have. Um, you have various choices for optional modules from various departments. So you are a part of our department that we, will, we would love to welcome you. Also, you have absolute autonomy to choose um, optional modules from other departments. To, in, in a way, uh, in our, this department in, in the School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, we try to tailor um, <clears throat> for each student um, a specific, uh, let's say a jacket that actually suits you, what actually you really like to have. So you can choose from languages, from uh, Department of Religion, Art and Archaeology, Politics, History, Development, Law, and so on. So this is a, <clears throat> our exciting program on MA Middle Eastern Studies. And similarly with MA Iranian studies. Now, MA Iranian studies is a unique program, which rarely you can find in uh, other universities. In a few universities in, in the world have it. For example, a uh, few top ranking universities, United States and few in the United Kingdom. And MA Iranian studies goal is to, to train specialists and experts on Iran and not only Iran, as I said, in, in complementing the Middle Eastern studies, actually, it will be experts on Iran, and the Middle East together. So uh, students can combine this program with intensive Persian uh, language, for instance. The modules, the structure is the same as other, um, our sister program, MA, Near and Middle Eastern Studies, 180 credits, uh, 60 credits from the dissertation, and 120 credits from the taught modules. The dissertation in Iranian studies you have absolute freedom. As I said, we are tailoring this. Uh, some students are interested in the international politics. Some students are interested in, let's say, <clears throat> cultural elements, history, um, sociology, economy, development, uh, gender politics, um, and, and any, anything that actually you find it more appealing to yourself or you want to be a specialist in that specific element. So that's, uh, you have the absolute freedom and support from us. Core modules, um, for instance, is Iran, history, culture, and politics, 30 credits. And the name is on it, is an umbrella module. It will look at everything. And I will give you um, a quite brief presentation on this uh, in a minute. <clears throat> there are other core modules as well, in Middle East in 10 weeks, but also, students can select remaining credits from the list that is on the website for our optional modules, including languages, language courses, for example, for instance, Persian, Persian uh, language, classical Persian poetry, the Zoroastrianism, historical and contemporary perspective, uh, which is uh, quite unique, and modules from various departments, such as anthropology, economics, art and archaeology, and politics, 
for instance, international politics of the Middle East, you can take that course and uh, international uh, and AI, which is artificial intelligence is a very new module has been introduced. <clears throat> Human rights and Islamic law, gender, law and society in the Middle East and North Africa, and even other languages such as Arabic and Turkish. So in other words, uh, the, is, is, is not only uh, one-sided politics, but is, is a kind of uh, umbrella that allows you to, 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 to be an, an expert and a specialist in this specific um, field. Um, I am pleased to say, as I mentioned, we have prominent colleagues and academics that support us in, 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 in your journey. And I, uh, I'm only able to <clears throat> introduce very few um, because of the time issue, but we have fantastic colleagues in our department of SLCL. For instance, uh, Dr. Uh, Yorgos Dedes, um, convener of the MA Middle Eastern Studies, and also certificate in Turkish, is a writer, also uh, Neoplatonism, and his book, I'm, I'm looking forward to read that. And also Nargis Farza, um, she is um, a celebrity in terms of um, teaching Persian uh, language. And uh, I witnessed uh, students come out of her uh, courses, actually speak Farsi um, in, a, in, a, in a quite admirable way, the duet. We also, um, this is me anyway, no need to introduce myself, Ali, and my um, speciality has been on Iran and Palestine and Iran and the Arab world, which will be part of the course that you will receive. We will talk about the Arab world, the whole Middle East and Iran, and how these two are engaged in, in, in cultural, political, and sociological elements. We are supported by our um, head of department, Dr. Nana Sato Roseberg, fantastic writer. And also uh, the beauty of this school is that we are actually engaged and supported by other prominent and um, celebrity academics, such as Professor Arshin Adil Mugadam, who is convening the MA Iranian Studies and um, from the Department of Politics. So uh, we are actually having access, direct access to the other department and um, working together in this regard and, and so on. So allow me now to give you a brief presentation on for instance, when I when I was talking about our programs, I said <clears throat> in MA Iranian, MA Iranian studies and MA Near and Middle Eastern studies, we are looking at all the elements, not only politics. We are looking into um, history, culture, economy, uh, sociology, and politics, and and all together. What does it mean? Um, how is it? How is how is it even possible? So I'll give you a, a kind of a presentation or a very brief discussion about one of the modules, core modules that we have. And you can see the other core modules that we have and other modules that we offer are quite similar and is a kind of a uh, umbrella um, uh, study in, to be micro and macro elements of that country. So <clears throat> in the module Iran history, culture and politics, we take you to a journey we talk about the culture and, and identity and history of Iran and the Middle East, Iran in the Middle East. So we go through that kind of a, um, uh, empire studies to see the roots of <coughs> Persians and Mesopotamia and Babylon, all these things we will discuss it. We see this, the culture and identity. Then we take you to <coughs> Um, other elements of the cultural studies to the Islamic Renaissance. We take you to history and culture to that kind of a journey. We we'll talk about the post Islamic identity, Islamic Renaissance, Iranian poets, philosophers, Rumi, Saadi, Avicenna, Khayyam, Hafiz, and literally um, you will be engaged with the core element of, of the Islamic Renaissance culture and literature and in Iran specifically, and in the Middle East um, as a whole picture. Then 
we will go, a, go ahead to develop this. And we talk about Persian literature and poetry and also the identity. But as I mentioned, the concept of Middle East or are connected. So we will discuss that. We will see this from non-Western lenses and also from Western lenses. So you have this opportunity to see from both sides. <clears throat> then we go to talk about state formation in the Middle East. For instance, in the concept of Iranian studies, we look how Iranian contemporary borders were shaped. We will do this similar thing in the May Near and Middle Eastern studies. How after the collapse of Ottoman Empire, the creation of new Middle Eastern states um, shaped today's region. And in the concept of Iran also, we take you to that journey um, as well. The state formation in the Middle East, we will talk about this in, in, in a very uh, comprehensive way. And we look into Russo Persian wars and transforming the contemporary Iran. And at the same time, we have similar uh, journey in the Middle Eastern studies with, uh, with the other countries in, in, in the region. <clears throat> then we take you to something very interesting. We take you to a very interesting journey, Iran's constitutional revolution and tobacco movement, 19th century. And we talk about their impacts on today's Iran and the whole Middle East. So that's how I say these courses are unique because you're not looking specifically at Iran. You look at the whole Middle Eastern uh, region together. So there are some events and developments in, in the region and the Middle East that actually affected the whole region. And we still, we can see the impacts today, but are quite not very obvious unless we delve into it and understand it. So we take you to that journey, the 19th century journey. Then we go in the concept of this module on talking about Iran history, culture, and politics. We take you to uh, the journey of modern Iran in, and in its place in the Middle East, the era of modernization, industrialization, and the Pahlavi's Iran. Very similar thing happened in Turkey uh, during, um, for example, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Very similar things happen in other Middle Eastern countries, but we will take you to that journey to study about the concept, the era of industrialization and modernization in Iran, specifically and how actually affected the invention of the cultural identity in Iran. We take you to another um, um, stage, which is the nationalization movement in Iran during the Cold War, 1951, 1953. And we look into the socio-political impacts on today's Iran, as we speak, and the Middle East, because after that, the nationalization of Iran and nationalization of oil and energy in Iran, later on, a few years later, you have the nationalization of Suez Canal in Egypt. So we go through this, we, we actually academically, analytically together study this, and we, we discover um, you know, very interesting points that actually um, we can't hear them in, 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 in elsewhere. So, and then other event in Iran and the Middle East that actually shaped today's countries and shaped today's region is the 1979 revolution in Iran and its impact on Iran and the Middle East as a whole. Uh, we will talk about the concept of Islam and the role of Islam and religion in politics, which was practiced for the first time in the modern world in, in, in the 20th century. And also we talk about Iran-Iraq war, the longest war in the 20th century, conventional war, even longer than the second world war. We will talk about uh, change of alliances in the Middle East, how many times the, the, uh, the, the, this uh, kind of a power game changed the end of the Cold War and the role of religion in, in the region and the clash of hegemonies in the Middle East. The role of religion as we speak today is actually um, absolutely prominent. And we will discuss that. We are not only looking into the revolution, but we look into how religion in this concept, Iran, in fact, uh, Islam, 
in Iran, in fact, um, changed the whole concept of the role of religion in politics and um, how politics is in, um, is affected by religion as we speak. So we, we delve into this. Then we, we go one step further. We look into the role of culture, religion, and identity in today's Iran. As you can see from the photos, from Zoroastrianism to Islam, we talk about the cultural and social ties with the wider region, it means Middle East. What does it mean religion and culture in Iran for the Middle East and how actually makes these to, makes them closer? What actually creates a very strong ties between Iran and its neighborhood and vice versa through religion, through culture, through architecture, through um, the history of the Islamic Renaissance. So we look into this. Then we take you to the modern world as well. So when we understand, because we need to understand uh, the culture, the history, uh, sociology, religion, identity, um, when we go through all these things and then developments, shaping of state borders, um, revolutions, and movements, um, and state versus nations, then we get into international politics. And here, in this course Iran history, actually we divide this in a very um, comprehensive way. We don't overwhelm you with one specific element. We actually divide this to different weeks. So each week uh, complements the, the other week and actually it allows you to slowly, slowly have a wider picture rather than giving you one element. So each week actually is, is a kind of a paragraph, an essay, you know, opens a window for you in, in a kind of a very interesting journey. So that week, in one of the weeks, we talk about Iran's relations with global powers. Iran with the United States, Iran with China, Iran with Russia, as we speak, is, is quite a hot potato topic. So one specific week is actually designed to discuss about Iran's relations with the superpowers and at the same time, how that affects the whole Middle East as well. Then we go one step further and delve into it. This, having discussed about Iran's relations with Russia, with China and United States and Europe and UK, then we get in inwards and we look into Iran's role in the Middle East and relations between the Middle Eastern states and Iran and, and vice versa. Literally, we talk about the relations with, and with Iraq, with Palestine, with Lebanon, with Turkey, with Saudi Arabia, with Syria, with Gulf Cooperation Council, United Arab Emirates and Qatar specifically. And actually we go one step further and we look into also Azerbaijan and Armenia as well and Central Asia. So literally we link a wider region and we look into the relations between them. What is it about uh, when we hear about the Cold War in the Middle East? What is it about the proxies? What is it about relations and, and all these elements together? So this is a very important element because if I go back to this, when we understand the relations of the global powers with the Middle East and specifically with Iran, then we can go to understand the, the, the engagement between the states in the Middle East, which comes from friendship, sympathy and um, empathy to uh, proxy conflicts, rivalry, and also competition. But we will discuss all together when we discuss about, for instance, Iran and Palestine and Iraq, all the way to Israel, Saudi Arabia, all the way to Turkey and Azerbaijan. Then, as I mentioned, the Iran history, um, culture and politics, we are not only 
um, in, uh, caged with politics, international relations, or history, or culture. We also um, have two specific weeks of this, uh, designated to economy of Iran and its connection with the Middle East and vice versa. So we look into uh, the economy of, of, of the region, and specifically of Iran in the Middle East and Eurasia. We look into the, the role of um, global politics in the economy, such as US sanctions. And also we are looking into uh, the, the, the regional uh, institutions. For example, ECHO um, is a regional institution, regional economic alliance between Iran, Turkey, and, and Pakistan and Central Asian countries. We look, we look into the, uh, the energy sector in Iran and connect that with the Middle East as well, such as oil and gas. And we look into global market. We look into other industrial elements, car manufacturing. Um, and, and also uh, we look into uh, to the, to, to, um, armed forces manufacturing and their impacts on the economy, for instance, um, 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 Revolutionary Guard, for instance, looking into um, you know, all these elements. So, uh, 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 in, in other words, the economy will be discussed in, um, in a very analytical way, and we specifically designed two weeks only to talk about economy. And and a lot of other things that we will uh, we will have for each of them one week, and we will discuss that in depth. Uh, also, we look into Iranian cinema. We look into Iran's tourism industry. And when I say tourism industry, we look into the tourism industry in Iran and the Middle Eastern tourists visiting Iran and, and vice versa. We look into national sport. What does it mean sport and football and the rest uh, in terms of the national identity and the connections between the nations um, in, um, around the globe and specifically in the Middle East. We look into also, one very important element, which is a gender discourse. We look into women movements, the role of women and uh, in, in all these developments that I mentioned, in history, in culture, economy, and politics. Where do they stand? What are the obstacles and challenges? And what are the achievements? We look into Islamic law and human rights as well. We, we discuss about ethnic minorities, for instance, in, in the Middle East, the Kurdish question, um, um, the Turkish, Persian, the Arabs, and all the, uh, together, we look into those elements as well. And at the end, we um, complement that with the poetry and the literature um, uh, um, in this regard. And one thing uh, specifically for this one module as a, as a case study that I give you, is we invite also prominent academics from institutions beyond SOAS. For instance, this year, we, um, um, we had a guest lecture from, uh, from George Mason University, Washington, D.C., from Nagoya University uh, in Japan, and Shanghai University in China. We, we will invite um, other prominent um, professors that actually do similar thing in the institutions um, uh, outside and, and to, to, to have a lecture from them as well. So by the end of the day, what I would say is, is that when you graduate from these courses, for example, one of the modules is Iran history, culture, and politics that I gave you uh, on a kind of an overview of it. Uh, our aim is for both modules of MA, Near and Middle Eastern Studies, and Iranian Studies, is that um, students to come out as experts, as specialists. And, we, and you have absolute autonomy to choose what specific elements you want to be an expert in the history, in international politics, international relations, or, um, or um, in terms of the languages, in terms of cinema, in terms of gender politics, in terms of economy, in terms of uh, national sport, or in terms of uh, human rights, and minority rights. These are the things that you can choose. By the end of the day, you will be an expert and specialist. And all these elements are complemented and supported by our fantastic language courses that we have, such as 
Persian language courses, Turkish language courses, Arabic language courses uh, that actually allows you to complement that speciality and to be fully a proper expert in this specific region in any micro elements that actually you you would love to be. So uh, I can unshare this now and we can we, I can share it again if it was needed. But let's uh, let's have a, a discussion if you have any any questions and then um, I'm not sure if you can talk, you can even talk. You don't need to write it only. Feel free to discuss that um, in all elements. I have a question that says, are there many mature students on MA Middle Eastern studies? Yes, we do. We do have, uh, that's the beauty of this uh, course. Um, uh, the reason is that um, Bodhika, the point is a very, very good question we do have mature students because these two specific courses that we have are for those want to be specialists is not about only a postgraduate is also to be a specialist and yes we do have mature students and it's a very um very good mixture in terms of age in terms of uh, gender balance in terms of um um, ethnicities, very global, very a kind of a rainbow. Uh, in terms of uh, Mar Marcel is asking, but feel free if you, I'm not sure if you can uh, talk, can you? Or it's just uh, Zoom is not letting you to talk. So let me say this. You said in terms of job opportunities. Well, Marcel is a very good question. I'll give you an example. One of the students that I had uh, was from Japan. Uh, finished in MA Iranian studies, and then now he's working as a deputy director of Asahi Shinbon uh, news agency in Tehran, and he's there, in, in, he's in Iran. Or we, uh, I had other students that actually are working in the embassies, you can work in your embassies, uh, you can work in the foreign office, you can work in the Red Cross, United Nations, you can work in, in, in the companies that are dealing with the other businesses or risk management. Uh, you can work in IAEA, you can work with WHO, you can work in UNICEF. I have students that are actually working there because, as I said, in these two specific courses, MA Iranian Studies and Near Amateur Studies, you will be a specialist. And that's the reason. Alumni positioning. Yes. Well, we have very good alumni positioning, actually. actually and I will tell you the alumni. As I mentioned, I have a student still are in touch with me, alumni graduated and they are very in a very good positions working uh, from and being a diplomat in Far East, uh, from one of the Far East countries, uh, come all the way to working in the United Nations and work, working in the uh, news agencies and all the rest of it. And, and most of my students actually uh, even traveled to Iran or to Middle East, so to be stationed there. Um, you mentioned, uh, related apologies if this is a very specific question, but I would like to become a specialist in ethnic minorities in the region. Would I mean, yes, you can be, Thomas. And um, in terms of ethnic minorities, uh, because the Middle East is a, is a quite a broad um, area, uh, you, you may select which ethnic minority you want to be. For example, in the MA Iranian studies, we have a specifically one week on ethnic minorities. And we talk about the Kurdish question. We talk about Azeri Turkish question. We talk about uh, minorities such as Turkmen. And actually I have a students that their dissertation, Thomas, is about uh, ethnic minorities in Iran, which because Iran has got uh, more than seven different ethnic minorities. Um, um, so that's why they selected that. And you will they are quite specialist in that regard. Um, it is very, very, there's a, there's a specific field people go into. Yes, Marcel, it's a good question. They are specific, as I mentioned. You have absolute autonomy, Marcel. For instance, I'll give you an example. In the MA Iranian studies, you have, you have absolute freedom to choose a specific micro element. For instance, uh, when we talk about Iran history, culture, and politics, which is we are looking at the whole Middle East as well you can select one specific element. 
for instance, we have a student that actually their dissertation is specifically about women rights. And one is about football. The other students want to be specialists on economy. And one of the students want to be specialist on economy of gas or renewable energies. The other students is specialist on, on the international relations only, or they want to be specific expert on, 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 on the literature. So in any aspect, economy, culture, uh, languages, international relations, international politics, internal politics, all you can select and you can focus on that and be a specialist, for instance, specialist on oil and energy um, um, economy based in, in the region. So I hope this answered your question, Martin. Shohan, um, I got an offer for history of art and architecture in the Islamic Middle East. Do I get to choose the module from Emirates studies or Middle East studies? I'm, uh, I hope so, uh, Shohan. Uh, you need to uh, ask that question from your department and see the structure of your course. This is very important, Shohan. Um, see, uh, go to the course that you actually got the offer and ask them if they would allow you to choose. Um, if you go to our website, for instance, and you click on the structure, it, it tells you which other, what, which course modules are core modules and which are optional and where you can get them. So I hope they have the same thing, but I would recommend you to email them. First of all, check out that website and email them, see, can I select this course from this department? I am, for instance, from MA Rainy Studies. And um, if they say yes, fantastic. If they say uh, no, you can request, say, I want to take this, can I? And see what they say. If not, you're very welcome to shift and come to MA Rainy Studies and we will we'll make sure that we will offer, we will cover um, uh, Islamic architecture and Islamic art as well for you. Um, Gabriel, I have advanced level of Arabic pre in Israel, Persian and beginner Turkish. Can I study all three at the same time? Gabriel, you can, but you need to look into the structure. Do you remember I gave you in the beginning of the discussion presentation that 180 credits? So you have 64 dissertations, then you have 30 for, let's say 30 plus 15 for core module. Then for the optional module, you can choose the language. Yes, you can. And then it's up to you which one you prefer. For instance, if you're fluent in Arabic, you may choose Persian or you may choose Turkish because then you can improve these two to be fluent as well. And that was Gabriel. Um, he um, is asking, after you submit application, I usually takes four to few hours to your decision, so it does not need to wait for that years of duty. <laughs> that is me, Ali. You don't need to okay. answer. I'm no just problem. happy to answer this question. I have my BA in Iranian studies in South Korea. Oh, fantastic. How amazing. Uh, is this program also great for uh, pursuing PhD? Yes. Uh, Yon, uh, we do have students. Actually, we had students from South Korea and Japan came and they did MA Iranian studies. And then after that, actually they are um, submitting the application for PhD for Iranian studies at the same department with us. And we have fantastic um, PhD students that actually um, managed to get to that level through MA Iranian studies because the, the MA Iranian studies in our school, SLCL, um, like near Middle East, uh, we, 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 we give you a different dimension. We make you to be experts on, for example, Iranian studies. And then you can select which specific element you want to um, conduct your research even further. So the, my answer is yes, we do. And you will be um, um, in that stage soon. Um, and what about the research institution, think tank job opportunities? Yes, Aeon, very good questions. We have, as I mentioned, students that have finished their main range of studies. Some of them are actually on experts, not only working in, in a news agency or embassies, but also for research centers. There are, we, will, we have a lot of research centers that we are working with. We have a center of Iranian studies at SOAS, which is with us together. And through that center, you will be a member of that center. 
and then you can uh, be linked to research institutions um, in the UK and beyond and um, to, to be part of their research um, institutions, to be with Think Tank, uh, actually. We have a number of students that after finishing MA or any studies, they actually establish Think Tank themselves. So when you start, we will link you with, uh, with the Think Tanks that you feel more comfortable with. Um, and then I can see Yi Zheng answered your questions. By the way, we also have um, um, a Cameron Jan scholarship. So um, some, some of you might be interested to apply for American studies through Cameron Jan scholarship. And this is a quite gifted uh, scholarship. And uh, I, I would also recommend you to apply for Cameron Jan scholarship, which you can find it as SOAS website. And um, Gabriel, which destinations do students go for summer abroad for MA in the images, Persians pathway? So this is a very good question, um, uh, Gabriel. Um, well, for, it, it depends, it depends. For instance, for Iran, um, um, we have students go to Tajikistan and we have students go to Armenia or some students even go to Iran, but this is their own initiative for summer. For them, um, so it depends on their, um, uh, let's say, preference. Um, but for also near and Middle East studies, we have students that go to Jordan, go, they go to Turkey um, and Egypt and so on. So I would say uh, it depends um, on your preference and also on your, on your uh, desire. And um, let me find also for you the website for uh, so any other questions um, or you can discuss anything? Okay, so I will also send you um, this um, uh, this link and this is a link um, to for everybody. For everyone so you can see if you are interested to apply for a scholarship as well. As I mentioned, um, the goal for MA Near and Middle East Studies and MA Iranian Studies, which they go hand in hand together, is to make sure at the end of the day, you will be an expert. And the beauty of it is that in SLCL, School of Culture, Languages and, and, and uh, Linguistics, um, you have absolute uh, opportunity to receive support from, from academics and also to, to equip yourself with the politics, with culture, with history, with sociology, with economy and, and language courses. In other words, why from my point of view, uh, this school and these specific two programs and this specific department is distinct and unique is because uh, you will be specialist, not in not having a postgraduate degree, but you will be specialist as well as having a postgraduate degree. And that is different. And in other words, you will be uh, expected to make comments uh, on global media and beyond. Um, so this is specifically, um, um, for instance, when you study medicine, some people want to be specialists in eye surgery. That's what we do in this specific department for these two courses. Uh, how many students will receive it? Well, we don't know. This scholarship is endowment, um, uh, Eon, and um, that will be decided by the, the, the endowment uh, committee. And it depends on how many applications they receive and um, then, um, um, then they, uh, they, they give you the answer. But hopefully, hopefully um, uh, I, would, I do hope um, there will be more students together. But it depends on the applications for this scholarship. 
Can I ask when I can hear the result, result for the scholarship, I believe? Well, I think the result for scholarship will come from them directly, not from us, because uh, Kamram Jam scholarship is, is, is decided by the panel, but I, uh, which is not spe specifically part of, uh, part of us. So I think you should receive it after the deadline. And I, the lead deadline, I think is April or May. But let me see, it says, when is the deadline? Is, uh, yeah, 2nd of May is the deadline. So I would say you should receive something after that. Yes, absolutely. Any other questions, anything? But I tell you in conclusion that I did teach in other departments and I did teach in other universities and I studied in other departments myself and, and other universities. This specific department will make you to go through a very interesting journey and to be a specifically an expert in that specific part of this study that you are interested in. So, any other questions? Did I miss any question? If I missed any question, please re retype it and I will be happy to um to answer what research institutions i answer that many research institutions chatham house has got even students that is specialist in chatham house that actually used to be part of um, our department we have think tanks we have uh, many many uh, other places okay thomas bodhika daniel Anta. Yeon, Choi, everybody, thank you very much. I didn't miss anything. I do personally hope to see you uh, next year, I mean, in September, and hope to see you that you're enjoying it as well. I think there'll be one more question about the recommended reading list. Yes. For, yeah. Maybe quickly yeah. answer that, then we can finish today. Which one is? Uh, is there a recommended reading list for MA in Middle Eastern study? Okay, recommended reading list. Well, uh, if you check our website, we do put, um, we have a syllabus as well, and we have a recommended reading list, for instance. But when you get, to, when you start in syllabus, we add them all in there. It depends which topic you want to study, for instance. Uh, we have the reading uh, uh, books like one thing I forgot to tell you all is that the reading list that we provide you with are the most up to date. So in every course that we provide for these two programs, the books are the newest and coming from the most prominent writers. For instance, the book What is Iran by Arshin Adi Mugada, the books by Hamid Dabashi, the books uh, on Iraq in Iraq by Toby Dodge. And, and many other things. So it depends uh, what specific elements of the Middle East you want to study. And uh, then we will recommend you that. For instance, when it comes to Iraq, the writings by Toby Dodge, for instance. When it comes to Iran, the writings by Arshin Adil Mugadam and Hamid Dabashi. And, and uh, the, we do have also, it depends on what, but we do have a set of uh, reading books that you can find it in the websites or uh, indicated and the syllabus. How the advisor will be decided? Professor yourself will be the advisor. Yes, I am. I'm one of the um, supervisors and, and uh, my other colleagues that I mentioned to you, Dr. Uh, Yorgos Dedes, uh, my very good um, colleague and other colleagues. And we we'll also have even other colleagues from the other departments that um, um, we can choose, but you have absolute freedom to, to nominate uh, your, um, your supervisor. For instance, my speciality is on Iran, by the same time on Syria, on Palestine, on Iraq, on ethnic minority rights, and also Turkey. Um, we have Dr. Uh, Dr. Um, Yorgos Dedes, he's a specialist in Turkey, for instance, and, and the rest of the Middle East, Professor Ashina Dimogadan, the same. So yes, but I'm one of the advisors and um, I really enjoy um, 
working with my students. So you have a absolute freedom to choose your advisor. Okay, thank you very much, Ali, and thanks for everyone for this informative and interactive um, tester session. I hope you all get something you wanted. And um, feel free to check our YouTube channel as well if you want to see all the previous open days and tester session related to the subjects. And thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody.